Hello and welcome back to Trammel Pick. So to start us off, it looks like we have a petition for a Farmer's Guild Hall by the Mint Company. So we're going to go ahead and approve that. And we're going to build it right next to the Craftsdorf Guild Hall, which is right here. Now that that's getting started, I actually want to create a stockpile here because I am going to create a minecart network to bring all this ore down to our magma forges. So for that, I'm going to I'm going to have it have the stockpile accept metal ore and then lignite. So we need to carve tracks. So we'll start it here. Yeah, about right here. And then the rest of the way, I will dig a channel out. Now that we've designated the channeling all the way down to where the magma forges are, we're going to create a we're going to we're going to dig out a shaft here to the stockpile. So now we got to wait until this is all mined out. As you can see, it goes all the way back up to where I placed the stockpile. The whole point of this is some is to cut down the time it takes for our dwarves to bring stuff down to the bring them down to the smelters looks like I made a minor mistake here so we can fix that just by doing a ramp here now in order to carve a track on this ramp we're gonna start right here go down down and <laughs> down some more this is as far as we can go for now until this ramp is built but our dwarves will carve these tracks onto these ramps and make them usable for the minecart. While we're waiting on that, we can create a minecart stop. So of course, we want we want the minecart to start here. So we're going to put the stop here first. And we can just make it out of blocks. Since this ramp is a constructed ramp, we need to actually build tracks on top of it. So we start from here and go down here and we'll just use blocks. It looks like you can't connect built tracks with carved ramps, so we're just gonna go ahead and cover all this up with built tracks instead, just to make things easier. Basically, we're just going all the way down. We need more blocks to complete the tracks, so we're gonna go ahead and start with that. In the meantime, Udil, our animal dissector, has entered a strange mood and has claimed a clothier's shop. So now we complete the final stretch of track, and then all we need to do is place another stop here. So now we're going to place the stop here at the end, and we're actually going to have it auto dump to the left. Basically, the minecart full of ore will come here, stop, and then automatically dump everything into the stockpile, effectively creating a quantum stockpile. For those who don't know, a quantum stockpile is basically a very tiny stockpile that when items get placed into it, it just stays there until it's used. Another thing we're going to need is a minecart. I'm going to make it out of iron. Um, you know what? We'll make, we'll just make 10 minecarts for the future. Maybe we'll expand the network and have uh, more stops and doing different things. Now that the Farmer's Guild space is carved out, we're going to go ahead and start smoothing it over. And we can also go ahead and just go ahead and pre-designate it. So, new guild hall, and then we're looking for farmer's guild. Here we go. So we need to go ahead and set up the stops for the minecart route, so we can go ahead and do that before the minecarts are built. So we add route, and then add a stop. This will be our first stop right here, and then we'll add the la the, uh, and then we'll add this last stop here. Now for the first stop, we need the we need to link a stockpile to put into the minecart. So it'll be this stockpile, obviously. Now for the conditions for this stop, have it guide south when full of desired items. South after 14 days of, 50, of at least 50%. And then we'll get rid of this last one. We don't want it to leave unless it has something in it. Then for the end stop, we want the conditions to be guide. So. For the last stop, we're going to have it have the condition be guide east immediately, always, when at least 0%. So basically, dump everything out and then go ahead and move it back to the first stop. So just to give you a quick visualization, it'll start here, and then it'll go all the way down. 
to the forge stockpile, which is right here. So go up here and then here. Stop, empty out, and then go all the way back up. I also realize we're out of wood, so we're going to do my favorite thing in the world, chopping down wood to piss off the elves. A part of me is hoping that uh, at some point the elven civilization will break their alliance and declare war because I think it, just, it would just be more fun. I also think one of our necromancers accidentally brought back this human as an intelligent undead and he's just kind of roaming around naked. I'm almost tempted just to put him out of his misery, but um, intelligent undead have special powers and they can be quite deadly. In other words, we'll just let him be. He's not hurting anyone. So with our minecarts built, we only need to assign one to the root, so we went ahead and assigned one. Now we just need to wait for it to be brought to the first stop, which is, of course, this stockpile right here. Meanwhile, Ilral, our brewer, has given birth to Linkot Bottleship, a dwarven baby girl. Now hurry up, grow up, get to work. We need more workers. So it looks like we need quite a few more wooden bins, so I'm going to go ahead and make those. You know what, I think it's time to automate the construction of wooden bins. So we're going to make a conditional work order. When amount of empty bins available is less than 10, make 10 more. This should take care of our problem here where we need more bins. That and it's one less thing I have to worry about making again. Work orders are especially useful for this exact reason. I'm pretty sure I've mentioned that before. Merchants from the mountain home have arrived. We couldn't get the materials needed for Udil in time, so unfortunately he has been stricken by melancholy, which means, um, unfortunately he's probably gonna die soon, which is quite a shame. I'd hate to lose him, but it is what it is. The necromancer mayor, Zasset Terranreg, meets with the outpost liaison, Rigoth. I am your liaison from the mountain tomes. Let's discuss your situation. There is much to share. I'm more in mostly interested in pigtail seeds, cave wheat seeds, some leather would be nice, and pigtail cloth. Unfortunately, we don't have enough to uh, we don't have enough to make cloth ourselves in sufficient quantities yet. We need to increase our pigtail production, and unfortunately, we can only grow the pigtails two seasons out of the year. So I'm going to go ahead and build another farm plot to uh, increase our production. I think it's also time to expand our control over these caverns. So I'm going to open it up here and I want to wall this area off and then use this area for more farm plots. Eventually, maybe also expanding up here. Um, we'll also remove these ramps here just so it makes it a little bit easier to uh, wall this off. Because if there's a ramp here and there's a wall here, they can just crawl on top of the wall. I think instead of walling this entire area off completely, I'm going to put a door right here, which will allow us to send dwarves out to utilize the rest of the cavern as needed. Because as you can see here, there's a bunch of cave spider silk, which of course can be woven into silk. And quite frankly, I like the idea of having our dwarves clad in silk to show our power and wealth, of course. It also looks like we have a new migrant wave. We have Silab, the metal crafter, Dastot, the trader, Doran, the cook, Litast, the mechanic, Lorbam, the mason, Obak, the surgeon, Olin, the pump operator, Urist, the bone doctor. The bone doctor and the surgeon I am most grateful for because we don't have enough doctors in this fortress which will probably be very useful later on when raids and sieges get a little a little more interesting, I, I will say. Zasset wants us to make crossbows, and the cheapest way to do that is to build a bowyer's workshop and just make them out of wood, so we'll go ahead and do that. And now it looks like Atir, our baron, wants us to make crowns, so of course we will oblige our baron. I was trying to figure out why the minecart was not being loaded, but then I realized I missed something very critical. This button right here. This um, tells this tells our dwarves what we want in the minecart. So basically, I want metal ores. Didn't mean to <laughs> didn't mean to allow all. I want all the metal ores that we have in the stockpile to be put into the minecart. As you can see here, store item in the vehicle, that means this is working properly now. 
It already has one tetrahedrite ore in it, and now our, the rest of our dwarves are going to fill it up. Now the minecart is moving down to its final stop before being brought back up. So I'm just going to follow it down just to make sure it works properly. And it just got emptied right here, as you can see. So now it's going right back up, and then it should re be refilled again, and then brought back down, and repeat until there's nothing left. And that's how you create a very simple minecart system-ish. I really wouldn't call it a system, it's very, it's a very simple system, I guess. <laughs> in this instance but of course we'll expand it as needed add more stops add more carts when necessary just something to keep in mind only one mine cart can be assigned to one route at one time so one mine cart per route the forgotten beast inyo has come a huge three-eyed sauropod it has large mandibles and it has a gaunt appearance its clear scales are oval shaped and close set beware its fire now, what's important to note here is the beware it's fire part, which means that this forgotten beast probably is fire breathing. Um, what's even more concerning of where it could be. Okay, this is not good. It is on the cavern level, which we have our farms. Uh, let's see what we can do here. Okay, here's what we can do. We can bar this door, so forbid it, and then I'm also going to build a wall behind it just to be safe. Hopefully it can't fly. I didn't see anything about flying, but that doesn't mean it can't. So just to be safe, I'll build a wall here and we'll, <laughs> we'll just have to let it be. In the meantime, we can, in the meantime, let's watch it. Okay, so it doesn't have any, it doesn't see, oh no. <laughs> That's very close. Good thing um, Forgotten Beasts are not smart enough to just bash through doors like that. Luckily, forbidding a door is enough for that. Um, yeah. Imagine being defeated by just forbidding a door. I mean, come on, guys. <laughs> Can't you think think of another way to get in? Okay, so it's, going, it's gone off into the distance where we can't see it anymore, so... Um, yeah, that puts a little bit of a damper on our plans to utilize the cavern a little bit more, but it is what it is. A special shout out to Meliborn from Elder Grilleam for allowing me to use their song, Nice Gnomes and Friendly Fairies. Check out the description for a link to the album Mare Tenebrarum. And thank you very much for watching. Please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. Uh, it really does help. YouTube requires me to ask you. I know it's a little cringe, but again, thank you. And I'll see you next time. Bye.